We're live now, Chair. Brilliant. Thank you very much. So thank you, everybody, for attending today's virtual meeting. Um, it's an executive member decision. It, today is the Thursday, the 25th of March, and it's 1.15 p.m. Um, the decision today is the Stainton Way to Crimson Crossing. Um, we, we know that there's been issues down there. We've had a local councils have been fantastic in representing the issues and making sure that this decision is brought expeditiously uh, and done as quickly as possible for the safety of the residents in the area. And, and personally, I'd just like to put my thanks on record to the councillors in the area, bringing this and pushing it with us to make sure that it does get done quickly. Um, so what we're looking for is that we approve the proposals to install a Toucan, cross, a toucan Crossing on Stainton Way. Um, it, it is proposed that we introduce the Toucan Crossing immediately to the west of the Gables roundabout in order to provide a safe crossing for children travelling between Hemlington Grange and the King's Academy in Colby Newham. The proposals will impact upon road safety of residents, school aged children in particular, in the Hemlington and Stainton and Thornton wards. Approval will continue to ensure the pro proposals are aligned with the Council's ambitions and objectives. What we're asking for today is the Proposed to open crossing on Stainton Way is approved in principle. The cost of the crossing is met in part. It in, is met from the part of the capital receipt for the Hemlington Grange development allocated for the provision of sustainable transport links. And work to deliver the scheme commences immediately with a view with a view to the new crossing complete in operation for the start of the 2021-2022 academic year. Now, I would, uh, Councillor Walker has been in touch with myself and asking how quickly that we can get this done and how quickly we can put that forward. Is that correct, Councillor Walker? Jeanette, you're on mute. Yeah, I, I know. I, it takes me a bit, you know. I apologise. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just squiggling on this thing. Um, yes, I'm, I, I really welcome this decision today. Um, I've been working hard on this as you must be might be aware or might not be aware for years now regarding that particular road um, we've got great concerns about it there's also two other two further um, road improvements and crossings in, uh, which we hope will be delivered sooner rather than later to help the people of um, Hemlington to to access other sides of the road um, because it's a 40 mile an hour road and it's a dangerous road because not everybody goes at 40 miles an hour unfortunately as we know um, and there, as, as, as you've heard, there was an accident in, before Christmas where a young girl actually ended up in crutches, well, with a broken leg and in a cage, a leg was in a cage all over Christmas. Not the best time. And also a mum, a single person, a single mother who's had to struggle with this. And she's been really petrified of her children going across that road. So it's, it's really brought home to everybody in the area how dangerous the road is. Hopefully people will take notice of these crossings. I've actually asked that um, that there is a, 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 a fence, you know, like a guardrail to encourage people to use the crossing rather than cross next to the crossing, but go actually direct to the crossing itself. So I'm hoping that that will actually happen shortly. So I just want to know when it would happen. What's the commencement date of the work so that I can tell all my residents that they can put the flags out and that they will see this actually materialise after all these years. Absolutely. Can I, can I bring you in on that, Rob, just to provide yes. a further update to Councillor Walker? Yes, you certainly can. I mean, basically, we're looking at um, there's a, within the report, there's an indicative timescale for actually carrying the works out. So based on approval today, uh, at the moment, the scheme is just uh, aligned on the plan. So we haven't actually designed it up yet. So we need to do some preliminary design, which would commence pretty much immediately run into to next month. We consult because we need to consult with our key transport stakeholders. And there are a few properties just on the north side of the crossing point, not particularly close to it, but you know, as it's, it's standard practice, we consult with any sort of nearby uh, occupiers of those properties, just with the, what we're proposing to do. So there'll be a period of consultation uh, that'd be April to May. Detailed design will then take place between May and June. We then go out to procurement because we need to procure the works. I'm not sure at this stage whether they're going to be carried out by um, our own environment services team or whether it be an external contractor that do, does the work. That'll be a little bit further down the line. And then we'll be on site from July through August with a view to getting, the, uh, as uh, Councillor uh, Waters said, with 
most of the plan is to get the, the new crossing up and running and fully operational for the start of the, the new school year in September. So that's where we are at the moment. That's just an indicative time scale. Subject to approval today, obviously, we'll work that up in a lot more detail. So we should be able to give you a better idea of time scales sort of a little bit further down the line. Brilliant. Can ask... Could you keep Councillor Walker in, informed on that? Sorry. Absolutely. Well, well, I, well, I looked at what well, I'll endeavour to do. Or what I will do is make sure that uh, both Councillor Walker, well, the board councillors for Hemlington and for uh, Councillor Cooper and their uh, statement and Thornton as well, obviously, both have a very keen interest in this. So I'll keep everybody informed as we go through the process. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, Councillor Walker. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just wondered, Rob, whether they, you are saying that you're going to put out for consult, consultation again to the properties. Do you mean the properties in Hamilton side or the other side? Uh, we anybody is sort of um, there aren't any properties directly next to where we're going to put the crossing in. But there are some within the within the vicinity on both sides. So just out of courtesy, it's basically it's yeah. probably more information than consultation. But we will take their views on board just in yeah. case they do have any concerns about it. It's just that the, those consultations, as you most really are aware, that they were actually done uh, quite a few years ago with the same people, and most of those people are still the same people. I'm yeah. just wondering whether that consultation has been taken into account when you've looked at the plans and the uh, sp the expedi expedition, is it, as you said, uh, Councillor Expeditious. Ex Expeditious. Expediting the like, process, yeah. yes. yes. Yeah. I feel like I'm part of uh, sound of, well, the, the, well, that song that... Uh, Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Super <laughs> yeah. Expedition um, doses, yes. Yeah. I mean, I'm just wondering if possible that, you know, because I'm going to have to, have to tell my residents it'll be July, August. Sorry, I've got a dog and it's barking. The postman must be here. Um, July and August, is it seems quite a way off to that uh, residence, obviously, as you can imagine. And is that the earliest you most probably can see any work actually happening? Well, I spoke to my colleagues in our highways team to where I drew up that program. So basically, the, that's we think is a realistic program. If we can accelerate it, we obviously will. Um, I think in terms of consultation, there's obviously been consultation before on the principle of providing more crossing points on state and way. And absolutely right. I mean, there's been uh, potentially two, looking at two or three crossing points between Hemington Grange and Hemington along that whole stretch of state and way, which we're looking to sort of bring forward in future years. Yeah. What yeah. we haven't done yet, of course, is consult because we haven't got a scheme, a detailed scheme to consult on. So once, once we've done our uh, preliminary design, uh, yeah. and we've got a scheme where we can actually consult people and we say this is where the crossing is going to be this is what it's going to look like then we need to do the consultation then because con consulting so, sorry actually consulting people on the principal things is one thing but obviously once we've got a tangible proposal then we need to get their views on that as well okay. can we can we put this out to tender alongside the the consultation or do we have to wait for the consultation to be done i'm just thinking of ways that we can I think you've, got to be if it's possible. You've, you've always got to be careful here, of course, because we can't, we, we don't want to prejudge what the outcome of the consultation process is. My gut feeling is it'd be very unlikely we get any objections to the scheme. So I suspect it won't be an issue, but I think we need to run. That's why we do the preliminary design, which is a fairly straightforward process. Do the consultation. Once, assuming the scheme is approved, we don't have any objections or any, and we've got all the necessary approvals in place. We could then do the detailed design and run the procurement at the same time. So where we can, we run those processes together just to speed things up. Is it worthwhile just going for a detailed design and then putting out a tender straight away? Or again, I'm just trying to, I don't know the, the ins and outs of the process. I'm just trying to... to again, I, I, I think it's sensible to do the preliminary design first. Just consult, just to make sure, because the whole purpose of cons consultation, of course, it's maybe that people are very keen on the scheme and they may say, well, actually, we think it might work better like this. There may be suggestions okay. that people have to make the scheme work better. So that's yeah. why it's best to do initial design. So you've actually got something to consult on, but you wouldn't do your detailed design until we've got all the necessary approvals in place. Yeah. Yeah. Again, Councillor yeah. Walker. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for your patience um, and get let me in to ask some questions. And um, you you say all that, and and hopefully it will be. However, can you remind me exactly what the two can two can crossing is? A two crossing. It's basically it's a light controlled signal controlled crossing, and it allows pedestrians and cyclists to cross. A puffin crossing 
is just for pedestrians. It's yeah. the more, more modern or the current version of what used to be a pelican crossing. And a toucan crossing allows pedestrians and cyclists to cross. So as well as the crossing itself, and again, this is uh, detailed in the report, there'll be a new section of uh, footpath and cycleway on the north side of the crossing that will basically right. connect into the existing route that connect, then runs across um, Hamilton Lane towards the King's Academy. So at the moment, it's just grass verge there. So obviously, we've got to connect the crossing to the existing network on the north side. On the south side, initially, the crossing will just connect into the existing footpath that runs along the west side of the B1365 Stokesley Road. But as further phases of Hamilton Grange come forward, there will actually be a dedicated pedestrian and cycle route as part of that development, which will connect directly into the crossing. So we'll have an interim arrangement and then a long-term arrangement. But the crossing will basically, we won't need to do anything to the crossing. It will be there to connect into there won't be any abortive work involved good thank you thank you very much brilliant are you happy with that council walk would you like to ask any further i'm i'm very happy i'm very happy that uh, that this is actually moving on now and i um, mean it's been quite some time and as you know i've uh, sent numerous emails to as many people as possibly can um to different officers and hoping to see plans i've seen rough plans i've seen detailed plans but and um, i'm still a bit I missed why that detailed plan didn't actually have a proper sort of part for, for this crossing that we're discussing today. However, I'm pleased that you're going to do it now and it's going to be done and it'll be done ASAP. And I can assure my residents that they, their health and safety is uh, foremost in the council's mind and that their concerns have been taken on board and that you will react and do what is necessary as quickly as possible. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Well, from that, I'd like to approve this decision. Um, again, I'd like to put on my th on record my thanks to Councillor Walker, and um, Councillor Coote, and, and the people involved, and the councillors involved in the area, and the local people that have, have pushed on this to to get it done as expeditiously as possible. So, well done, guys! Thank you very much, and I'll bring this meeting to a close. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Good afternoon.